Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen looking at economy issues in Alpha 3.7 in the PTU, a new PTU patch pushing towards live, a leak that helps confirm what we expected at CitizenCon, and more news besides. There are some economy issues in 3.7.0's PTU, with trade and cargo running. Basically, the profit was incredibly low, even though there's still a reasonable amount of risk in the gameplay loop, even if you've got a huge hauler. Jack Axton on Spectrum pointed this out and um, said that there's been a big change from 3.6 to 3.7. In fact, it's actually close to reverting back to 3.5's gameplay when it comes to cargo numbers. So. Cargo running is not viable in 3.7's PTU because of this in its current state due to terrible profits. NCIG have responded. As you pointed out, the prices in 3.7 aren't just close to 3.5's, they're exactly the same. Due to an oversight, old values for trade routes were added over the value set in 3.6. When we added new inventory items for the hand mineable items, we'd already taken measures to make sure that this kind of thing doesn't happen again in the future. Citizens rejoice, 3.6 prices will be restored as soon as possible, your diligence is very much appreciated, and your commitment is exactly what makes Star Citizen great. So I think it's great that they're addressing that issue, and I want to see cargo hauling providing opportunities for other people to respond to distress signals, provide work for escorts, and even pirates wanting to ambush them, especially with the Mantis and Quantum Interdiction coming with the patch. However, if there's not enough of a profit in cargo hauling for a uh, high risk, uh, low reward sort of gameplay, that, that's bad. You, you, need, you need a good amount of reward for a good amount of risk, and you need the, uh, the ability to both leverage cargo haulers to make a reasonable amount of money. I'm not talking about huge, huge amounts constantly, but I am talking about at least a reasonable amount of time invested to pay off, even in the alpha now, because, I mean, they're, they're balancing these things. These things are going to change, obviously. I would like them and prefer them to do a, a quick bit of an economy pass for 3.7 before it goes live, rather than just having the same prices for 3.6, changing some of the prices, trying to get some more hotspots in the game, like what we had with the original Jump Town. That would be great for the game. That would be great for Quantum Interdiction and Escorts and all of that sort of like associated gameplay with a cargo hauling. So hopefully we'll see a couple of other little changes there. And CIG have released a 3.7.0L patch to the PTU and and um, that's open PTU as well, so it's available to everyone that's got a game package. There were some updates in the patch. They corrected an issue with missile velocity that caused them to have the wrong scaling. Smaller missiles should now travel faster than larger ones generally. Balance updates for the Banu Defender's default shield have been made. The review pose on the character customizer should no longer cause a position offset on the target head. The Crusader L5 rest stop should no longer be obstructed from most directions. They fixed missing collision above the cockpit of the Defender that allowed players to enter the ship by going to sleep. Showed a video on that. Having a turret gunner should no longer break targeting for the pilot. Players should no longer get stuck if they rapidly pick up items. You weren't stuck anyway, you could change your utility item uh, and then actually uh, get back into the game, but they fixed that anyway. Hurston assassination missions should no longer have Hurston security as a target. And uh, they fixed two server and two client crashes as well. So the main focus of this patch though has been addressing known issues and they've reduced a list of 24 major known issues from the last PTU patch to 10 now. Those being corpses and caves may not be interactable, Snoopy Cap appears in hairstyle options on the character customizer, in Star Marines Damien Combs a map enemy indicators can sometimes be seen through walls, Cloverstar Neely uses the wrong audio dialogue when offering a mission. AI ships can get stuck and can not continue on their route. That is something they need to get fixed urgently, in my opinion, uh, and the same as the corpses in caves not being interactable, because you need to be able to interact with them to be able to complete missions. NPC beacons will sometimes display an incorrect distance. Attempting to quantum travel to destinations from orbit of Arc Corp or its moons may result in the player colliding with the surface. Again, that is a major one. Ships can excessively spin out of control when their wings are clipped. Again, that's something that, that they probably want to get fixed. Uh, landing illegally and having your ship despawn while a box is inside will break mission progress. And the default hair may be present under other hairstyles. So, they're obviously trying to work through that list of remaining 10 known issues. There are other um, outlying issues and, and tweaks and quality of life things that they will be doing for the life build as well. But, it looks like they're still trying to get that life build out for the 10th of October. So, 
potentially expect another PTU patch between now and uh, the end of day 10th, and then them trying to get a live build for the 10th, if possible. Leak and spoiler warning, though. So, there have been some more leaks helping to confirm what we supposed in February of this year, that Pryro will be in the next system, and that appears to be what CIG have been building for a little while behind the scenes, and it will probably be shown at CitizenCon. So there was some information data mined, and this shows a list of various locations that CIG appear to have potentially been making. Uh, the Pyro jump points, so Stanton to Pyro, uh, the planets Pyro uh, 1 to 6 as locations, as well as Ruin Station, which we know is in the that system. Uh, the six moons of Pyro 5. A couple of other things here are Gainey being listed, which is Odin 1A, a moon that was shown in the Squadron 42 vertical slice, and a location known as Zygmunt Station. But I literally don't know anything about that station. But that looks like that's very, 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 very 99% likely what we're going to see at CitizenCon. New star system, jump points, and uh, pyro, which makes sense because then I think they're going to be building their way towards the Odin system, going like from pyro to Nyx, makes sense. But they could also potentially build out uh, another jump point from Stanton, so something like the Magnus system, which is uh, a nice simple system as well. So pyro, pretty simple to do, um, other than that it's got a flare sequence star or something, so the star there is unstable and sh shoots out sort of like radiation and solar flares, but I suspect they can just do a cool little effect. But yeah, that's pretty exciting. I'm hoping to have new systems in game that are in our hands next year, but we'll have to wait and see. Luke Presley, lead Star Citizen Live designer, confirmed that AI are getting some work that will be in our hands pretty soon. He said the AI should be in a way better state um, as they're working on true 3D pathfinding, which means we'll be able to add them back around stations and such. We removed them due to crashing into stations. And this makes sense why they haven't already pushed out green zones, replacing armistice zones. They need security forces to be able to enforce station security and potentially NPCs to attack stations as part of missions as well. But this addition should see missions with AI being more involved in combined arms potential warfare and uh, using points of interest as parts of missions more readily. A reason to use the railgun, a reason to use the missile launcher which is coming soon, that sort of stuff. So that 3D pathfinding is incredibly important to the way that AI are just going to be able to perform and move around the universe. It's it's integral to their sort of like uh, building of the AI model for both Squadron and Star Citizen. Buyback tokens were refreshed. These allow you to purchase previously melted ships with store credit, and you can do this once every three months. These get refreshed at the start of January, April, July, and October. Um, so if there's a ship that you wanted to rebuy, cool. Just be aware that you've got until January for that token to be refreshed. Over the last couple of weeks, CIG have been running a ship showdown where they're getting the flyable ships in game and having people sort of vote on them um, to see what's the most popular flyable ship at the moment, sort of. The top four ships currently are the Cutlass Black, Caterpillar, Reclaimer and Hammerhead, and it looks like either the Caterpillar or Reclaimer will be crowned the champion of this popularity contest on the 10th of October and expect some cool things to happen on the 10th of October. I'm expecting sales, free flies, uh, things like that. 3.7 to go live, the Mantis to go on sale, lots of cool stuff like that, and potentially some of these ships in the ship showdown, probably the top four, to be available on a free fly or something like that. But what do you think? I'd love to hear your opinions. Do you think we're going to see Pyro at CitizenCon? Do you think that's what that leak suggests like I do? And we are also thinking we're going to probably see the Carrack and the Pisces and maybe a new Anvil ship and some gameplay from sort of 3.8, 3.9 potentially sort of features there. Um, obviously in a more enclosed environment that aren't ready for prime time, but uh, something there nonetheless. Do you think CIG will be able to get that live build of 3.7 out for the 10th of October? Or do you think they're going to delay it like another couple of days? Do you think we're going to see the Mantis? Do you think we'll see any other ships or sails going on at the same time? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Every month we have a ship giveaway. For October, it's an Anvil Carrick Explorer ship that should hopefully be flyable in Alpha 3.8 at the end of the year. Just comment on any of my videos made during October to be in for a chance to win that. 
there's an Azatec giveaway as well. They make cool CPU coolers. See what I did there? And at the moment, they're giving away eight of these lovely CPU coolers with my logo on. So there's a lot of board gamer branded ones. I'll put a link down below for that separate giveaway too. I am also shilling for NordVPN and Shadow Gaming PCs. So um, use the code BoardGamer for discounts there. NordVPN, in a world of censorship and privacy issues, VPNs allow you to browse the net and play games in more safety. NordVPN has many benefits over free VPNs, and that's why I shill for it. Uh, some of you also might be interested in Shadow Cloud Gaming stuff. Uh, this allows you an alternative to sort of like buying and maintaining your own gaming PC. You can stream a custom Windows 10 environment to devices like your phone, a laptop, or a crappier, lesser PC. And bam, it's fantastically powerful and it's maintained and hardware is regularly updated for you. It's a fantastic service, Shadow. Cloud gaming certainly has quite a big future ahead of it. If you'd like to further support my channel, please consider subscribing, sharing this video, ringing the YouTube bell so you get notifications when a video goes live. This is a channel that is funded by the community via donations, Patreon members, YouTube members, um, and anyone else that wants to get involved with comments and helping. Thank you to everyone that goes the extra mile. Take care, and I will see you in the verse.